Very often in education, uh, there is a debate about education and how it is best taken forward, how far education is about knowledge and facts and how far it's more about encouraging people to have inquiring minds to analyse things for themselves. And it's one of those many debates in education that I tend to think is a bit of a false debate because the reality is that you need a combination of both things. Of course, there are important facts, important areas of knowledge that everyone should share, but the ability to do something with those facts is of equal importance. We need both. And I think Holocaust education and genocide education more broadly uh, are fantastic examples of that truth. Clearly, we want people to know about what actually happened in the Holocaust and in other genocides and mass atrocities. It is a crucial and essential starting point for education about the Holocaust, for future generations to be aware of exactly what happened, not least in a world where, of course, there are still some who seek to deny the fact of what happened in the Holocaust. Locating what happened, the unprecedented horrors of the Nazi Holocaust, in a broader history of anti-Semitism, of other forms of hatred and discrimination, and of other genocides and mass atrocities seems to me absolutely crucial. And that, of course, has really been at the heart of what this centre has sought to do, to focus absolutely on the Holocaust itself, the attempt to eliminate an entire race of people, the Jewish race, the mass murder of other groups by the Nazis, but also then to make other connections, connections to other genocides, other mass atrocities, but connections too to our own lives here and now and the hatreds and divisions that still scar our modern world. And we know that anti-Semitism has tragically a very, very long history. We also know that despite the never again slogan that followed the Holocaust, anti-Semitism is still rife in our world, whether it's the offensive gesture on the football pitch in our own country, whether it's what we saw just two days ago in Paris with uh, anti-Semitic chants at an anti-government demonstration, or perhaps most disturbingly the rise in Hungary of the party Jobbik, which is an explicitly anti-Semitic political party that is now the third most popular party in that country. Anti-Semitism isn't simply something that happens in the Middle East and linked to that conflict, though of course we know it is there. Actually, anti-Semitism is still here in Europe. And that is why Holocaust Memorial Day is so vitally important and why the work of this centre is actually more important than ever before and why I'm so very pleased to be here. But we also recognise that whilst the scale of the Holocaust was unprecedented, and we've seen nothing like that since. The Holocaust was not the first genocide. The Armenian genocide predated it, and despite never again, we have seen subsequent genocides and mass atrocities in Cambodia, in Darfur, in the Balkans, and of course in Rwanda. James mentioned that I've recently taken over as chair of the all-party parliamentary group on genocide prevention, which works very closely with the Aegis Trust. And a priority for us over the next few months is to work with Aegis and others to commemorate the genocide in Rwanda. 20 years ago, to remind ourselves, almost a million people killed in the space of just 100 days, mostly because they were Tutsis, others were moderate Hutus. So alongside our commemoration of the Nazi Holocaust, there is a special reason with the 20th anniversary for us to remember Rwanda. And James spoke towards the end of his remarks just now about the responsibility of governments, but also the responsibility of people. And I think Rwanda stands as a stark reminder of what happens when governments do nothing. And the story of Dallaire and the United Nations forces that were on the ground and weren't allowed to intervene, even though they wanted to the story of the failure of governments from all parts of the world to do anything when this was happening in the latter part of the 20th century bears witness 
to what we still need to do and why the work of Aegis and others, for example, on the responsibility to protect is so vitally, vitally important. I'm really pleased that James is part of this commission that David Cameron has set up, which has very strong cross-party support. It is an opportunity, as James said, to build upon the brilliant things that a whole range of organisations are already doing to promote education about the Holocaust. But in the end, it is about the children and young people and about the teachers who work with them. And it's great to see the children here. We were having a little bit of a chat beforehand, the children from the primary school. I know we have parents from the children's centres who are going to be presenting here a little bit later on. Primary and secondary school children are coming through this centre week in, week out. I think it's what makes this National Centre unique, that opportunity that the children have to come here to see the exhibition, whether it's the journey for the primary children or the longer standing exhibition for the secondary children, but also to hear, as James said, the voice of the survivors. And that's really where I'd like to finish today is just to reaffirm what James said about uh, the survivors and the amazing job that the survivors do here at the centre, but also going to visit schools and in our wider communities. Their voice being heard is at the heart of how we most effectively deliver education about the Holocaust, but also how we try to ensure that we don't see genocide and mass atrocity again in the future, and how we challenge the prejudices and ignorance and discrimination that we know still exist in the communities in which we all live. So many, many thanks to the survivors who work so hard with this centre. Thanks to James and the rest of the Smith family for what they have achieved and continue to achieve here. And let us all today dedicate ourselves once again to the cause of a world free of genocide and mass atrocity, but also a world free of anti-Semitism and all of the other forms of racism and bigotry that so scar and divide our communities. Thank you very much.